A square prism of base side 30 mm and height 50 mm has one of its rectangular faces inclined at 35 degree to VP and has a base edge on VP inclined at 45 degree to HP. Draw its projection. So this is regarding a square prism, 30 mm side and height 50 mm, and it has got two inclinations. One is inclination for the rectangular face, which is 35 degree to VP. Another one is inclination for the base edge, which is on HP, inclined at 45 degree to H, which is on VP, inclined at 45 degree to HP. So here also we have got two inclinations. So here we have to take a decision which inclination is to be applied first. So for that we will be using the order of preference. So order of preference. So as per the order of preference. First preference is for face, second is for axis generator, etc. Third preference is for base edge, and the fourth preference is for diameter. In our question, one inclination is mentioned with respect to face. So first preference is to be given for face, and this 35 degree with respect to VP must be applied first. And second inclination is with respect to base edge, and base edge is having the third preference. So this 45 degree with respect to HP. Is to be applied in the second. Uh, it has to be applied second. So we had all. We have already made that decision. Now, uh, in order to draw the base shape, so here I have already drawn the base shape. I have drawn the front view as a square and top view is a rectangle. So I have drawn this particular diagram that is the base shape of this square prism first because the inclination with respect to VP is given first. It has to be given first. So, if at all we have to give the inclination with respect to VP, it is preferable that the base shape must be in the front view. So, the view that is coming in the VP is front view. So, the view that is in the front view, uh, the view that is to be drawn first is the front view, and in the front view we need to do the corresponding base shape. So, after drawing the base shape, I have drawn the front view. I have named. I have named it as. A dash. The front face is A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash. So here it is. Front face is A, uh, A, B, C, D, and the rear face is A one dash, B one dash, C one dash, D one dash. Here it is A one, B one, C one, D one on the rear side. So when you are observing this diagram from the top, let us see which all points are visible and which all points are invisible. All the points which are on the top surface. So this is the top surface. This is a rectangular face actually. But when you are observing from the front, you can see it only as a niche. So A dash, B dash, A one dash, B one dash. So all these points will be visible. That is A, A one, B, B one will be visible. A A one, A A one, B B one, B B one will be visible. And all the points on the bottom face that is here we are having another rectangular surface is here so these four corners will be invisible so those corners are c c1 c c1 d d1 d d1 so this is about the b shape and the other view so here i have drawn the top view on the x y line because here the base edge is resting on vp So when things when something is resting on VP, its top view must be on the x y line. Then only when I am tilting this solid in order to give this inclination of 35 degree, it will be resting on a base edge. Okay. So now we shall go to diagram number three. So we are going to apply an inclination, and we are going to apply the inclination with respect to the rectangular face. Okay. So let us consider this rectangular face. The name of this rectangular face is B B one C one C. So this is a rectangular face. When you are observing from the top, you can see only it as a line. Okay, so this is actually representing a rectangular face. I am going to make an inclination of thirty-five degree to this rectangular face. I am going to reconstruct diagram number two to this side such that this edge, that is B B one C C one, is making an angle of thirty-five degrees. So on the right hand side of the diagram number two, I'm going to draw take an inclination of thirty five. So thirty five degrees. Now I'm going to reconstruct this face to this thirty five degree inclined 
side okay so i'm drawing a 35 degree inclined line here as a thin line and this angle is let me mark it as 35 so this angle is 35 Now let us fit this rectangular face to this 35 degree line. Length is true length itself 50 mm. So this point is B1, C1. B1, C1. And this point is BC. BC. Now BC and this this long side and this short side they are at an angle of 90 degrees. So this length is actually 30 mm. So I'm constructing it perpendicular to the first line. So length is 30 mm. So this side is A D and this side and this side also they are perpendicular to each other. The length of this side is 30 mm. This A1 D1. Okay, I, have, I shall draw the axis also to this uh, diagram. It is located to the center of the diagram. Chain line. Now this is diagram number 3 Now we shall obtain the next front view. So the next front view is obtained by extending projectors from the present top view and previous front view. So we shall extend projectors. So all these projectors are thin lines, type B lines. We shall extend it from the axis also. And now we shall extend it from the front view. So the next step is marking points that is eight corners in the front view A, B, C, D, A1, B1, C1, D1. So we shall start it from BC. So this is the projector of B and this is also the projector of B. So this point will be B dash. This is the projector of C and this is also the projector of C. So this point is C. Next is the axis. Next point is A. So this is the projector of A and this is also the projector of A. Let us mark it as A dash. Next is D. So this is the projector of D and this is also the projector of D. So let us mark it as D dash. Let us come to the rear side. So this is the projector of B1 and this is also B1. So B1 dash. So next is C1. So this is C1 and this is also C1. So C1. C1 dash. This is the axis. 
so this is a1 and this is also a1 so let me mark it as a1 a1 dash next is d1 so this is d1 and this is also d1 d1 dash after obtaining these points the next step is drawing the outline so let us start it from this extreme left hand side so beyond this boundary this boundary we don't have any other points of this front view so let us draw a straight line here and go on rotating your scale with respect to this point so we'll be having four points in line here join these four points again you go on rotating the scale with respect to point b next is point c so this is actually c dash again you go on rotating your scale the next outline will be along these four points so this forms the outline of a diagram which is a rectangle next step is finding invisible corners so for finding out invisible corners we shall observe the top view so you just mark an arrow here you assume that you are observing it from this particular direction in order to get the front view on the extreme left of this top view it is point a1 b1 and on the extreme right of this diagram it is bc let us assume that we are having a straight line here connecting a1 b1 and bc so behind this line if we are having any points of this particular solid it is supposed to be invisible if it is not a part of the outline usually but not always here b1 c1 is there so b1 and c1 actually they are part of the outline but still this in this particular problem this these two points will be invisible because they are at the back side of the corresponding solid so b1 dash and c1 dash will be invisible and the edge connecting c1 dash and b1 dash also will be invisible so we shall draw it as a dashed thick line okay so next is we have to check out whether we have done with all the uh, base edges front face edges and the lateral edges so let us start with uh, the front face that is a b c d so here we are having a dash b dash b dash c dash c dash d dash but we don't have a dash d dash a dash d dash will be visible in this particular problem and it is not con crossing any confirmed hidden line so definitely it will be visible let us consider the rear face which is a1 b1 c1 d1 so here we are having a1 b1 b1 c1 c1 d1 and d1 a1 so everything is drawn here now let us consider the lateral edges lateral edges are a a1 b b1 c c1 and d d1 so a a1 b b1 c c1 d d1 everything is drawn here so the front view is come Front view is completed here. Now we shall give the second inclination. That is, the square prism is resting on a base edge on VP. Okay, so let us identify that particular base edge. When something is on VP, its top view will be on the XY line. So here, when I have reconstructed diagram number two to diagram number three, I have just tilted it at an angle of 35 degrees. So when I have tilted it, actually it is resting at a particular point here. So this is actually edge B1 C1. So the prism is actually resting on VP on B1 C1 on edge B1 C1. Okay, that is why when you are observing from the front view, the edge is invisible, and when you are observing from the top view, this point is on the XY line. Now let us reconstruct this diagram. to obtain the fifth diagram so here what you have to do is it is resting on a base edge on vp and the name of that base edge is c1 b1 we have to make this edge at an angle of 45 degree with respect to hp so 45 degree with respect to hp means 45 degree with respect to the xy line in the front view so i am going to draw an xy line here I already i have drawn an xy line here let me draw a 45 degree line here 45 degree line So 45. You draw a 
thin line. This is type B. Onto this type B line, we will be fitting edge C1, B1. So this angle is 45. This angle is 45. angle 45 I am going to fit C1 D1 C1 B1 onto this 45 degree line so let me mark it as C1 so this point let it be C1 dash I am measuring the length here uh, it is actually having the true length itself which is 30 so I am drawing a dash thick line here Next, so this end point is B1 dash. Next is, I'll be drawing this base. So this line and these two lines are perpendicular to each other. This line and these two lines are perpendicular to each other. Here this is not 30 mm. We have to measure it manually. It is around some 80. Okay. I am drawing a perpendicular line here. So this is 18. Here also I am drawing another perpendicular line. This is also 18. Now join these two points. So this point is D1 dash. And this point is A1 dash. We shall also transfer this point to this figure. So this is located to the center. So onto the midway of this small rectangle, we are having a straight line here. So we shall draw a small straight line. So this is something that is nearer to 18. So we shall take 9. A small thin line so this is 30 let us mark here it as 15 this is for locating the axis now we shall draw these two lines that is C1 dash C B1 dash B dash so these two lines are perpendicular to this edge C1 D1 we have to measure this length it is approximately 40 mm so these two ends are c1 c1 is here this is c1 dash it is not C1 dash, it is C dash. This is C dash and this point is B dash. Now let us mark D1 dash, uh, D dash and A dash. So measure it. So this is again, it will be approximately 18. So let us put a dot here at 18. And again, this one will be also 18. Controlling only the approximate dimensions for you, it may be something uh, different. Maybe a, a difference of one mm will be there. Maybe. So this is D dash and this is A dash. Okay. Now we shall mark the center. So locate the center of this rectangle. So this is 18. Let us mark it as 9. 9. Probably it is 30. Let us mark the midpoint as 50. So this is actually the axis in the front view. You have to draw it as a chain line. 
here also that chain line is to be drawn now let us draw the final top view so in order to draw the final top view we have to extend projectors from the present front view and previous top view We need not extend projector from B1 to C1 because already we are having our XY line. So after drawing these projection lines, next step is to locate the points A, B, C, D, A1, B1, C1 and D1. So let us start it from C. So this is point C and this is also point C. Let us mark it as C. Next is D. This is also D. Next is the axis. Next is point B. So this is also B. Next is point A. This is point A and this is also point A. So we shall now locate C1. So this is point C1 and this is also point C1. So here comes our point C1. So this is point C1. Next is D1. So this is the projector of D1 and this is also the projector of D1. So this is D1. Next is B1. The last one is A1. So after join, after getting these points, we have to draw the outline. So starting from A1, so because A1 is a leftmost extreme point in this. So we shall go on rotating our scale with A1. So the next connection is B1. So A1, B1 forms an outline. Next is we are going on rotating it with respect to B1. Next connection is B1 C1. And we go on rotating. Next connection is C C1. And we go on rotating with uh, C. Next connection is C D. 
again go on rotating it is da next is aa1 so this forms the outline of the top view so beyond the boundary of this outline we don't have any other points now the next step is to find out invisible corners so let us consider this diagram we shall draw an arrow head here we are going to get invisible points in the top view in this diagram the extreme left point is a1 dash and the extreme right point is c dash let me place my roller scale here so you imagine a line connecting these two extreme points so below this line we are having points d dash so d c1 and d1 so all these points they may be invisible in the top view if they are not a part of the outline so we shall check it one by one d d is a part of the outline so it is not invisible c1 c1 is a part of the outline so it cannot be invisible last one is d1 d1 is not a part of the outline so d1 will be invisible here so we got one corner which is invisible so if one corner is invisible obviously it will be there will be three edges which are starting from this particular corner which are also invisible so let us check which are those corners so in order to check out that we shall come to the diagram number 2 so starting with d1 it will be d1 d d1 d so we shall do d1 d dash the line then it will be d1 c1 so d1 c1 then it will be d1 a1 d1 a1 so here it is d1 a1 so we completed all the invisible edges now we shall draw all the other edges let us come to the front face here we are having a b c d so here it is we don't have ab here so we shall connect a and b so ab will it be visible or invisible it depends upon the so when you are placing the scale like this it is crossing a confirmed hidden line so it will be definitely visible now you connect b and c b and c b c edges will be visible because b and c is visible okay then let us consider the lateral edges which are the lateral edges a a1 b b1 c c1 and d d1 here we have done with a a1 it is already there what about b b1 b b1 when you are trying to draw b b1 as an edge it is crossing another confirmed hidden line so this also will be visible c c1 is already there d d1 is already there and we shall draw the axis axis is using chain line and the last step is dimensioning process